All right. Uh, let me pray for us. Father, uh, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for the upcoming rest on the weekend. Uh, thank you for the beauty of the day. Thank you for the beauty of Greek. And I pray that you help us, uh, help us get better at this skill. And we pray all this in Christ's name. Amen. All right. Who can tell me the declension of the word good? Uh, Mateus. All right, so the first thing you have to figure out is how do you say the word good in Greek? All right, and so what's the, what are the endings? What's that? Agathos? <laughs> That's exactly what it would be. Os, u, o, on, e, oi, on, ois, us, oi. A, ace, a, ain, a, i, own, ice, os, ice. On, u, o, on, on, ah, own, ois, ah, ah. And I remember it, Agatha Christie. Uh, Agatha means the good woman, right? So pretty cool. Uh, John 1, 1 to 5. Who would like to do it? I would like, oh, okay, good. 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 I'll talk. <laughs> Good. You, you were doing it faster than I could do it. Uh, uh, all right. First five lines of the Lord's Prayer. Who wants to do line one? I can do it. Good. Who wants to do line two? Good. Good. Who wants to do line three? Good. Who wants to do line four? Good. Good. <laughs> nice. Okay, he can get the next little bit. Perfect. He can get the next little bit. Ton Arton. Hey, Moon. Oh, oh, Urno. Right? Uh, Erno's here, I think. Host in Erno, Kai Epigays. Moan. Epi something. Epi Epiusian. Tan Artan, he moan, Tan Epiusian. Das. Das. Hey, men. That's it. Das, hey, men, say, Moran. You guys are memorizing in a foreign language. Wow. I'm impressed. Okay. Vocab. Uh, we'll do this together. Uh, nikao. I conquer what word in English do we get from it? So do you know that at the Battle Marathon, there was this guy named Phidippides who wanted to run, but he had already run 300 plus miles, so another guy uh, ran, and then uh, the commander sent Phidippides to um, bring the second message, but he 
ran the 26.2 miles and he ran the other guy in the ground and he went in the <coughs> gates at Athens and said, Nike! and fell over dead. So where in English does that come in? Well, we get marathons from it. We get 26.2 from it. We get... He was the first Rocky Balboa. He was the first Rocky Balboa. We get swoosh. Nike. Victory tennis shoes for, oh my goodness. Nikao. We, uh, probably wing goddess of victory or yeah. Uh, I will, I conquer. Nikeso. I will conquer. I conquered. I have conquered. I have been conquered. I was conquered. Okay. Homo logeo. What does. Right, what does it literally say? I same say. Right? I confess. I will confess. I confessed. I have confessed. I have been confessed or been agreed with. I was agreed with. So if you confess, you're saying the same thing that other people say. Or if you confess sin, you're saying the same thing about your sin that God says about it. Coming to agreement. So it's like they say, are you guilty or not? If you confess that you're guilty, it's like you're You're agreeing, yes. Ah. Is that the word that is used when the scripture talks about confessing your sins? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And it's also the word in Philippians 2, every tongue will homologeo, that Jesus Christ mm-hmm. is kurios. So that's interesting, because I never would have made that connection of confessing being like coming into agreement yeah. with it. It, has, yeah. it, it has to be like confessing yeah. that you're guilty of something. Yeah, admitting, you know, <coughs> no, no, but, I did this, but, you know, that's not, it's like I did this. I did this and I'm totally guilty and mm-hmm. all right, uh not us. Temple. Right, and technically it's the inner part of a temple. Uh, so the holy most holy place. So here, Iran is like the holy thing or the holy place, and that's the whole building, <laughs> but this is like the inner sanctum so part. Is that where, like, the veil is? That's exactly what it is. So is there anything we get from that in English? Na- maybe the word nave, uh, but I don't know. Um, we get... Here, Iran is like hierarchy, uh, holy archy. <laughs> uh, so, um, what is Al? I do wrong. Right? I'm I thought it was something different than that. Is that actually? No, wait, that's a different word. Oh, I'm confused. I thought it was the word again. Oh, man. Oh. Moreover, on the other hand, back, again, any one of those. Uh, Patris. So if you're an expatriate, what does that mean? You're, yeah. <laughs> Did Tom Brady quit the Patriots? Uh, it's, I think they're going to, uh, the Titans might sign Oh, wow. For real? Let's go tighten up. Okay, so if you're an expatriate, it means you're away from your fatherland. Ek patris, right? Dr. Davis, have you ever seen um, How I Met Your Mother? 
I have. It reminds me of Patrice. <laughs> Do you remember that? I haven't watched it that okay. carefully. Is that one of his girlfriends? Uh, it's the girl that Robin works with that, with that she hates. And she's like, nobody uh, has oh, Patrice. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember <laughs> that. That's what I thought of. <laughs> nobody has <asking> Patrice. <laughs> <laughs> so, Father Land. Oxus. Oh, this is like sharp. This is used in the New Testament of the drink that they give Jesus on the cross. Um, oh. A sharp tasting, pungent. Uh, and indeed. And indeed. More. More. So if something is a pleonasm, uh, what is that? A pleonasm? Uh, when you're describing something that's beautiful and you say it's good and beautiful, that's a pleonasm. You're using more words than necessary to uh, describe something. Or at least I think that's what a pleonasm is. Uh, uh, more or rather. And so th this is like the adjectival form and this is like, I mean the adverbial form. And this is the adjectival form, two ending adjective. So is this sort of where we get our word plural? Could be. Could be. Oh. Uh, gnome, gnomes. Right, opinion, right. Uh, Timmy. It is, it absolutely is. It's the now one of the noun forms of gignosco. Timmy. So if somebody's name is Timotheos, what does it mean? Someone who honors God? Uh, Metaxu? All right. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I just know that that's with, and I don't know what that what part means. Uh, plus AK. Uh, right. I will. Uh, Prin. I think in the New Testament, this is part of that verse. Uh, he kept her a virgin until they came together or something like that. I think the word print is used there. You know, so, some traditions try to make Mary perpetually a virgin. But the fact that Jesus had brothers um, makes that kind of hard. And they do, oh, Joseph was married and had children of another marriage. And it's like you're doing exegetical black flips just let it say what that's i do wrong yeah that's what i do wrong adicao alpha privative uh i will do wrong i did wrong i have done wrong i have been done wrong i was done wrong right okay so i review do this with me and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him, and and he comes into house. Oh, he comes into house, and the crowd came together again. So that they were not even able to eat bread. And see, it's Santos. So it is the parson. And having heard, that is, those with him having heard. Those closest to him having heard. Went out to Krateo him. Democratia is people power. What's the word for preaching? I was mixing that up with Caruso. So krateo is democratia is people power. 
is how I remember it. For they were saying that he's out of his mind. And the scribes, the ones from Jerusalem, I'd probably do it aorist. Having come down, we're saying he has Beelzebul and that in the prince of the demons, he cast out demons. Eris Middle, I think. And having summoned them. Right. He, in parables, I would do it imperfect. He was speaking to them. He kept saying this to them over and over. Good. And if a kingdom against itself is divided, that, that's Aris passive subjunctive. And whenever you have on, you're going to have a subjunctive. Usually you're going to have a subjunctive. If a kingdom should be divided against itself. Or maybe just a statement. It, it is not able, that kingdom is not able to stand. It's itself. <coughs> That house is not able to stand. And if the Satan, which that's interesting, should stand up against himself and is divided. So this is not uh, subjunctive because you've got the temporal augment and you don't have the iota subscript. So uh, is divided. He is not able to stand. Or maybe, but he has an end. You could do it that way because it's neuter, so that could be accusative. But he has an end. But no one is not able, and in English we would say that no one is able, but in, that's because in English when you use not, you flip it back and forth. They don't do that in Greek. The more nots it is, the more negative it is. Uh, but no one is able to go Having gone into the house of the strong man, do you see that? Second aorist, uh, de augmented, ace aothon, de augmented, so participial endings. No one having gone into the house of the strong man, dia harpazos his skue, rifles through his stuff or plunders his stuff. Unless, Eris subjunctive, he should first bind the strong man, and then he will plunder his house. So Jesus' argument is, how am I kicking out Satan? I'm kicking out Satan because I tied him up and I'm taking his stuff, and there isn't a thing in the world he can do about it. That's uh, glorious. We we handed we signed over our title deed to the Garden of Eden, and made Satan our king. And Jesus is rescuing us. He's buying a, 
buying back Eden, and then he's sacking uh, the goods of the, the king that we sold the deed to. This is very common in uh, the New Testament. Amen, amen, lego humen. Truly, truly, I say, to, and it's where we get the word amen from, right? Oh. Amen means truly. So you say your prayer and then everyone says amen. They're saying truly, that prayer is true. Yeah, that's the word true. Uh, Aletheia, aletheis, yeah. It's a separate word. This, this is actually, I think, an Aramaic word that's come into um, Greek. Uh, truly I say to you, all things will be forgiven to the sons of human beings what are the all things? Taharmartemata. The sins. The blasphemies. How, however many things they should blaspheme. But. Whoever. So if you want to say whoever. Put on with the relative. Whoever should blaspheme against to the Holy Spirit has not throwing away, right? Has not forgiveness. Ace ton I own. We get the word eon here. Into the eternity. Does not have forgiveness into the eternity. And in Revelation, it talks about Satan being tormented day and night. Ace, toss ionos, tone ionon, into the eternities of eternities. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but that sounds bad. I don't want anything to do with that. <laughs> uh, but is... It is, but is guilty of an of an eternal sin. Whew, good. So I'm really looking forward to rest this weekend. I've been very busy. I've been busy on the weekends. I'm not planning on doing anything. You know, I told you my. My son Jonathan and I are into that Alaskan milling thing. Did I tell you about the accident we almost had? No. So, you know, we're cutting up this huge tree for Mrs. Sullivan, you know, the lady in the, um, and it was a tree that had fallen on her house and on her brother's lost house. Right. So we're cutting this tree down, and when we're getting close to the tree, I mean, it's a big tree. And so Jonathan's friend, uh, Andrew, was there, and we are all, you know, working real hard, and I hear this sound like 2,000 pounds hitting the ground. <laughs> you know, you hear this kind of, and looked, and uh, half that tree had just fallen and my son Jonathan had been running up and down the thing. We were cutting things, you know, he cut this huge branch off. And so we we're down on the ground cutting it up and Andrew walked up to it and so much weight had come off that it just collapsed and it hit the ground. And it's like, we could have been killed. And I'm just picturing myself talking to Andrew's father. Um, oh, this is gonna be really bad. And I thought, God, protected us because we that was so bad that could have been so bad so we're taking this weekend off Ta taking some break uh, from the tree okay so rested
Um, do you want to do this together today? Uh, okay, what does this say? And they, because they were saying, he has a akathartos, alpha privet, he, an unclean spirit. And this is so glorious why Mark's helping us realize that you can't accidentally blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Because what was this group of people saying at the start of this? They were saying that Jesus is crazy, but they weren't blaspheming the Spirit. Um, so what does this uh, say? His mother and his brothers. How many brothers does Jesus have? So, so he has four. James, who wrote the book of James. And that's not Jacob. It is Jacob, but I mean. So James or Jacob, a guy named Joses, which is the nickname of Joseph. James, Joses, Simon, and Judah. And we don't know anything about those two people. Simon and Judah. Uh, Listen, in Matthew. So. And he has two sisters, at least two sisters, but we don't know their names. Uh, and. And outside. Standing, and standing outside, they, Apostello is, or, they sent to him, no, the word apostle means sent, so this is just the word sent. Standing outside, they sent to him calling him people will do that when they want to pressure you into something they'll get a group of people and they'll come that's true how do you how do you uh, tell the difference between apostle and sin it's just like the context of, of the passage yeah so it means apostle actually means the sent one okay. so uh, our word apostle is just kind of a made up word okay. to try to represent this but it just means the sent one And the crowd was sitting around him. And they say to him, Behold. Yes. Would that mean with, I don't know if this is a weird part, but um, has, was Jesus ever referenced as that? As the sent one in that way? Uh, was he ever called the sent one? Uh, he is called a sent one um, in that statement whom you have <coughs> whom you have sent um, I don't know if that's John 17 or in another passage but yeah that is John 17 alright so what does it say behold your mother and your brothers and your sister. So both Matthew doesn't mention who they are, but says, and are not his sisters here pros humos toward us? And that's how we know pros is a relational word because the logos was pros tom theon. Mm -hmm. Is that related to uh, something to do with seeing? Because I know we translate it behold, but I. Oh, yeah, it's, uh, de it's from Adon. I saw or they saw. It's the middle imperative. So it's like C. C. 
And ida with an epsilon is the active imperative. So idu is C for your great benefit, and ida is C. That's the difference, but it's, they're both from Adon. Uh, and they are seeking sa. They are outside seeking you. And having replied to them, he says, Who is my mother and my brothers? And having looked around at those around him, thank you, a little Greek boy. Having sat in a circle, says, Ide, behold, my mother and my brothers. So this idea that if you can talk the Virgin Mary into something, she'll talk Jesus into something, is that like a biblical idea? Or is that like a made-up idea that somebody didn't get from the Bible? <laughs> I know which way I'm going to vote on that. Uh, <laughs> for whoever should do the will. Ah, Tathalema. So some manuscripts don't have the gar and some do. Yeah, because I know that sometimes it's like some do and some don't, so they put it in that way so that they so here, here's the, here's the rule. What I guess what my question is, what would be, what would change that, so so much in a way that that's so, like such a big deal. Oh yeah, if it weren't there. If it weren't there, behold, my mother and my brothers, whoever, should do the will. So you you lose the. Yeah. So if you have this, the editors are saying it belongs there, but we made a decision. Some people look for yourself. It. If it's this, they say it doesn't belong there, but we're going to print it because people have been printing it for a long time, but we don't think it has a right to stand there. Why would that be? Something that was, that was, it's like they don't even think it should be there. Why would they? Well, suppose you took out, for thine is the kingdom, power, and glory forever, amen, from the Lord's Prayer. Would somebody buy your Bible? That guy's ripping says it's out of my Bible. <laughs> okay, it's not in early manuscripts, it's not even in many manuscripts, it's in late ones. And it's in our liturgy because when Erasmus published his Bible, he had five manuscripts. We have 5,000 now. So there's a kind of emotional issue. Um, but if we just went with like what they would do, the Lord's Prayer wouldn't have for thine is kingdom, power, and glory. Now that's biblical. It just comes from Second Chronicles, okay? So it isn't like it's anti-biblical. It just wasn't there, uh, probably wasn't there. The pericope of the adulteress, uh, you know, where Jesus draws in the dirt, um, that's in all kinds of manuscripts. The problem is it's in different places in manuscripts. So, like, there's evidence that that happened, so it just belong. But it just doesn't belong there. Then the ending of Mark, you know, the, there are actually four endings to Mark. The nothing ending is the one that has the support where they don't tell anybody. The other three are look like scribes trying to fix it because they think the last page is gone. And there's nothing in the ending of Mark that doesn't come from the others except picking up the snakes. That's, that's new, but everything else is actually in the others, so it isn't like there's anything wrong with it. It's just... Is that what Mark wrote? Probably. So the longer one is traditionally printed because Erasmus printed it. 
but he only had five manuscripts and they were all late manuscripts. Yeah, so, so it has the weird about drinking poison. Yeah. And even the snake one is probably Paul and the snake, uh, you know, checking it off into the fire. So it isn't like it's anti biblical. It's just, is that what Mark wrote? Probably not. Mm -hmm. And then the testimony of the three Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There isn't any Greek manuscript that reads that. Uh, now, is there Trinity in Scripture? <laughs> like every page. But was that written? No. And so you'll get people who will use arguments like, well, you don't believe the Trinity. It's like, I believe the Trinity, I think it's on every page. I just don't think we should print that because Erasmus printed it and said, oh, I'll find the manuscript, and he never found it, so. So then why do we print that now? <clears throat> because if we started printing like only what's there, people wouldn't buy the Bibles because it would seem like we were ripping things out. So what they do is they print it in our Bibles with those double brackets and they put a note and say the earliest and best manuscripts don't include these verses. There are actually 18 verses that are blank in our modern Bibles, but you don't pick up that they're missing, you know? So it'll go from three to five. Um, like, those have so little evidence, but when the guy put the verse numbers in, he put it in the bad manuscript, so. What, so what do you do? I mean, do you move the numbers up or just omit it, and so. So you have to be kind of careful. How you, but when we have this, that just says, hey, I've made a decision. I think it's, it has evidence, but I want you to, you know, don't build any theology off this unless you look for yourself. That's what they're saying. So we still have these things because people just don't want to change their filing system? Pretty much. <laughs> Uh, we'll go Chloe and then. I don't know if this is a silly question, but um, do you think it's possible that some of the manuscripts we have might actually be autographed? So, the clo when I was a PhD student, the closest one we had was 120. <coughs> and I've actually been in the same room with that one. Um, I have a friend. <laughs> We weren't even supposed to be in there. We were graduate students. We were using Manchester's library. And he said, do you think they'll let us see P P52? And it's like, they'll never let us see P52. And so we asked the guy, and he said, sure, come see it. So uh, he brings us in two pieces of glass. And I still remember my buddy doing this with the pieces of glass. And I think, if you do that, we're going to be, do you know what the <laughs> Do you know what these British jails are like? Uh, we'll never get back home to America. But we did, and that was the oldest one. Thank you so much. No um, today, there are some scholars who think that we have a manuscript of Mark from 70, which Mark may have been written in like 66, so like, we, we may have a copy of a copy, uh, but we don't have any of the originals, I don't think. I don't know how old So handwriting changes over time, and then you can uh, date the paper it's on. Uh, and um, I don't think it's carbon-14 dating. I think it's other dating. Um, but like the early manuscripts were all written on papyri, which is less expensive. And we have very few of those. And all of those have numbers, so like P52, P41, P5, P, and it's papyrus. And those, you get a papyrus, and that's really early. Uh, we have some complete manuscripts that are on leather. 
and that would be like writing something on $150,000 paper today. I mean, those were really, really expensive. And we actually have pictures, like I could pull up a picture of like the actual, but it's so expensive that there's no word breaks and there's no punctuation. So it just, imagine if you're reading something and there are no spaces because you wanted to save those spaces to write more words. And then uh, we have minuscules, which are kind of handwriting, cursive handwriting, and those are written on other material, and we have lots of those. But the early ones, we don't have very many because they're very precious. So, All right. We good? This is... My brother, my sister, and mother. And then again he began to teach them by the sea. And the greatest crowd, Pleistos, Aklos, was synagogued toward him. So this is what's cool. So that he, in the boat, having gotten in, sat in the sea. And we think we know the exact place where this happened. Like, the exact, like, uh, the whole crowd was by the sea on the land. We think it happened exactly here, and here's why. I'm going to play a recording for you. And a guy recorded it on his phone, okay? And you can see these are people, right? So how far do you think that would be? That's pretty far from there, yeah. Right. So the guy who's talking is talking under this tree. So how far away do you think, if, if there to here, that's people, how far would it be from there to there? It's, it's like on the front side of, okay. So a guy's holding his phone, and a guy's talking under the tree, and this is what it sounds like. So there's something weird about the acoustics of that hillside, that it's perfectly balanced acoustically, where 10,000 people could be on that hill and could hear someone talking in a normal voice. Wow. And so this is called the, so, uh, the Cove of the Sower. And they think that Jesus' boat was exactly right there. Oh my and and where it is, if you go like half a mile down this road, that's Peter's house at Capernaum. What? So they just went down and they found this place that is perfectly acoustically balanced. I think that was a coincidence. <laughs> yeah. And like even to this day, I mean, if somebody told you I can stand in front of... Um, the student center and speak in a normal voice and you could record it on your phone right here, what would you say to that person? You, you, you have lost your mind. But there's something about this place where it's just, with the water and the slight upturn of the land and the fact that it's kind of like that, it focuses the sound so that you can hear it. 
a natural amphitheater. And if, like, you can slope upwards just for, like, everyone can see. Like, everyone can see. And I've always told that the person is under this tree, but part of me wonders if the person actually isn't in the boat. But because you can't see the person under the tree, mm -hmm. but where the person is is near the water, and where it's being recorded is there, just with the device. And the fact that the recording is that good, I mean. So you can find that for yourself at a place called BiblePlaces.com uh, Cove of the Sower, and it has an MP3 file. Have you been there? Yeah. Been there a couple times. Did you try it? Like, no. Like, no. no. <laughs> we, were, we were like in a rush, and so we just did the bus there to Capernaum and the bus back, but... That's exactly what it looks like. Is it usually populated? Like, are a lot of people usually there? Uh, usually, nobody's there. Do you think someone would ever do like a like a sermon there or something? Like that? I wonder if that's what that guy did was doing um, with the uh, recording. Yeah. You do like all sorts of things. Like. That's the, if you ever get the opportunity to go to Israel. You'll have one experience like that after another. Uh, when you need our trip to Israel, we'll come. Mm. I'll, I'll enroll again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and he was teaching them in many parables. And he was saying to them in his teaching, listen, behold, hasperon, sperai. Can you hear Jesus like, so that's actually what the guy was saying. You know, he was actually saying this. So that's why they call it the cover of the sower, because Jesus' parable of the sower. Uh, the sowing one went out to sow, and it came about in the sowing. One fell by the way, and the birds gobbled, came and gobbled it down. Another fell on the rock on the rocky place where there was not much earth and straightway it sprang up because it did not have depth of earth. All right, hope you have a great weekend. I'll see you on Monday. What's happening there is that it was in Erasmus's manuscript, but it has no right to be in the Bible. So when the guy put the number system in, he used Erasmus's, and he just did it. But he was assigning a number to a verse that did not. So what they do is just skip it. And there are 18 of those in Bible. That's it. I'll see you, Dr. Davis. You have a nice weekend, Professor Davis.